Guys, this is Dark Horse Rowing. We're here at the world famous Deuce Gym. One of, yeah, the <laughs> mecca, the mothership, yeah. with Logan Gelbrick, the man, the myth, the legend, amazing man, also a USD Torero. Proudly. Proudly, like myself. We were both athletes at the same co college together, uh, different sports, and reconnected through CrossFit. Yeah. Really. Um, but this place is an incredible, incredible place, and we are here to talk with Logan about his specialty, which is strongman. Yeah. Right? And bringing that into the conversation of rowing, because we always talk about rowing, but there are incredible pieces of other modalities that are useful for rowers, um, that rowing is useful for other sports, like that two-way conversation, right? Totally, and I don't look like a strong man, I don't think, <laughs> you know. Uh, in, my head, I, I, in my head, I'm still like the skinny freshman at USD, so <laughs> people, when I say that, people are like, yeah, right, you're, you know, whatever, but I still don't look like a strong man. And um, the reason why I say that is the only reason why any of this was of interest to me is for the skill transfer part of it anyway. So right. when a guy like you uh, calls me up and say, hey, we want to talk about rowing and strongman, I'm like, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whereas someone the, might the two say, blend together. yeah, someone might say like, well, I don't get it. You yeah. know? And, and so I think something that we do really well here and something that I would like to promote or say in this fitness community is that strongman the implements and the movements are for everyone and they are for everyone regardless of your goals yeah. in a lot of ways and so the skill transfer part is even that's my entry point in the strongman yeah. I'm not the uh, buys and tries like I'm not that guy right so that's so me that's all my stuff that is you right, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I'll go to you for that um, but so, yeah, that's just where I'm coming from, right? right. Is, uh, for me, strongman is not the thing that's in the corner for the strongest guys on the planet to play with. It is a excellent tool for athletes of all levels to accomplish, sure, specific goals in a sport called mm -hmm. strongman, but also very general goals. And that's what really we really deal with here is general people with general goals. And we find that these implements do a great job there. And I think that's what I've always admired about the way that you coach, is that, like you said, it's it's an entry point for everyone. Yeah. It's not just for the strongest guys in the gym. It's not just for you know the people who can actually move the weight that you build up. It's that you are using this as a way to achieve fitness for anybody, whatever their goals may be, whether it's sports specific or whether it is for rowers or whether yeah. it's somebody who's doing this for GPP, right? General yeah. physical preparedness, just yeah. getting ready for life. Yeah. It seems like uh, the ego is getting in the way of all of us as athletes, as coaches, it's, it's a, a big issue. And, and the reason why I bring that up is if your ego's too big as a coach, you maybe want to impart your, your knowledge and be the master and teach everyone how important it is to you know snatch and clean and jerk and these things are all great to do that thing yeah like yeah. they want you want to impart your your knowledge but i think it takes a humble athlete and a humble coach to just look at what's effective what's the most effective thing for this person right here right now and yep. we are very open and i am very open to all movements you know Variance is great. We'll hop on a rower as much as we hop on the rings and as much as we do high skill barbell work. But at the end of the day, I at least have to consider the power of something that's simple. You know? I'm okay with being like, hey guys, this is gonna be simple. Yeah. You know, and we're gonna carry a sandbag and you're gonna get really strong. It doesn't have to be complex yeah, to be effective. I don't need to show off. Right. You know, like if we can go as deep as you want on any of these topics, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, I think we can get in trouble in that way. And strongman, if I'm going to be completely honest, strongman has its own version of that same problem, right? right? You have a sport that at times can feel like an elitist thing. If you don't deadlift 800, you can't hang out with us, right? And that, yeah. that rowing can be the exact same way. We all can. Yeah. The ego is, 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 a, is a tricky thing, right? So it takes some courage for a guy like you to be like, hey, maybe we all should hop on a herd. Maybe we all should talk about this conversation. And so, I don't know, I think we started that, in that place yeah. some some humble view, then we can have That's cool correct. conversations like this. Yeah. You know? What does what rowing have to do with strong? And vice versa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's cool. Because that's, I mean, that's the exact point, right? This, 
Would you consider your gym a strongman based gym? That's a great question. I want to answer this on video because <laughs> I want to hear, I want people to hear my answer. So <laughs> it's funny. Um, I think there's something in uh, the CrossFit community and the strength and conditioning community that feels like there's a certain kind of CrossFit, a certain mm. kind of fitness at each gym. Like CrossFit such and such is, that's like the weightlifting one. Right. Right, and CrossFit so and so, that's like, they do a lot of endurance stuff. And then Deuce sure. Gym, like, that's like the strongman gym. And I hate that, because I don't think it's true. Now, let me be clear, we have some specialty courses here, Strongman 101 and Strongman 202, that are very straightforward. And you also run a rowing program, am I right? And we have a rowing program, exactly, right? But the, the CrossFit program, our GPP program, I like to take a firm stance that it is not CrossFit Strongman. Strongman CrossFit, right? It's constantly varied, true GPP. And we touch kegs and barbells and these people flip tires just as much as they do anything else. You know, and I think that's important to not impart your bias, right, your jam on everybody and sort of skew a program that is meant for general physical preparedness and um, uh, make it something that it's not. It's the goal of the athlete, not the objective of the coach. Yeah, totally. Right. The, totally. The goal it, being, what is the athlete look, or what is your, your client looking to accomplish yeah. versus what do you want to impart as a coach? Totally. Right? And if we're just going to be honest in, in what we're saying we're offering, yeah. right, growing these general capacities, uh, then I think it would be unfair to turn this into a strongman gym. You yeah. know? Visually, people see it. So sure. They go like, yeah, that's the strongman place. This is a great place to come do strongman stuff. Yeah. But uh, in the GPP program, you are going to get a broad, general, inclusive fitness. That being said, that's the whole argument for strongman. Right. You know, if we're going to say that a beautiful functional movement like a chest-to-bar pull-up or a toe-to-bar or a clean or a jerk is in the cards, then carrying a sandbag, uh, pressing a log, um, flipping a tire also has to be in the cards because I can make a damn good argument that I can get more people under load and experiencing intensity faster with those movements at times. Right. Right. And so that's the beauty of it. That's the why. Right? So, so let's bring it to rowing yeah, okay. as a tool. Yeah. All right. Because the thing that <clears throat> I think where I, where I come from when we're talking about this and really one of the revelations that I had through my coaching was that um, it's not about the rowing. For us, it's, I, I don't need to turn people into rowers and I'm not trying to turn people into rowers. I think there's just a great argument to be made for helping people understand this machine as a tool yeah. because when we do that, we can open people's minds to using it for different purposes, right? Not just the purposes of saying, oh yeah, I want to be a rower or rowing is the most important thing, right? Yeah. That's, not the, that's not the case. Yeah. I, rowing is just another tool for people to find fitness in one way. Totally. So with that being said, um, how, do you, how do you tie in your work with the machine into your programming mind and the way that you see that as a tool for helping people achieve fitness. Totally. So the, the ERG is in the mix, like I said, just as much as anything else. And we respect the tool for a lot of different reasons. One thing that I think comes to mind that we, we do, I would say, quite well here is filling a gap that can show up in CrossFit programs when it comes to like the energy system side of things. Right? If everything is either a strength element or a breathable oxidative 12 minute AMRAP, then sometimes we leave this gap out in the middle that looks like uh, some glycolytic anaerobic middle distance effort. So we love rowing for calories, we love intervals, we love high expressions of power output uh, in the GPP program. Now of course in the strongman things, you know, Strongman 202, our athletes hop on the ERG, mm -hmm. you know, you can look up on uh, YouTube and see a bunch of world's strongest man competitors going for world records on our ERG, right? I was you just going to bring that up. Yeah. I mean, that has been the trend over the last nine months, maybe. Yeah. We've been seeing strongman competitors get on this machine and just dropping records left and right from anywhere from 100 to 500 meters, right? It's an expression of power. And, you know, this is definitely a two-way street. It's a, you know, one 
lane on this road is you have people that are arguably the best in the world at expressing power, hop on an erg, something that they have little, maybe to no experience, you know, they're not experts on the machine, and demonstrate, express that, that power. There's obvious carryover. Then the other side of it is, you know, we'll have somebody like uh, Emily, I know you just spoke with her, yeah. um, who rode in college, right? So she's going to school and doing her homework and eating in the cafeteria for one purpose, right? Is to make her team's boat go faster. Right. Okay, well, it had been a while since she had been on an erg because, you know, of her career and life and what, what have you. So this and is a rower that takes a pause from rowing. Yeah, a rower takes a world. pause. Her purpose is to make boats go fast in the water, yep. takes a pause from that, and comes into a very potent, intense dosage of some strongman expression. Right? Yep. She took the strongman 101 class. Put her back on an erg, coincidentally, this wasn't like a thought through test, but coincidentally, on it, back on an erg, and uh, we saw a lifetime PR, you know? Now, of course, the distance has to be right, you know sure. what I mean? Um, she PR'd, I think, in the 500 meter row, which is like, it's right in that lane, you know? Can you express power for a minute and a half, two minutes? Right. And the answer for her was yes, at a higher level than she could before. Yeah. You know, so the, 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 the street is two ways. So, X, I'm gonna jump off of that because Something that, and, and I've experienced this with programming for rowers, um, something that's greatly missed really is that necessity for some, some large power expression because we don't see that on the water for a lot of the rowing community. They're not getting a lot of intense strength training in yeah. what they do. So let me ask you this. If you are thinking of, let's go to that actual rowing athlete, yeah. right? that person who's on the water, or let's say they are training to be an indoor rower. Let's yeah. say they want to compete at the indoor 2K, yeah. right? The, the World Championships, uh, Crash Bees. Yep. Where does where does the strongman work come into play for that athlete? Totally. How I'm going to get there is like a two-step process. First is, regardless of the training adaptation that you're trying to make, variance is your friend. Okay. For example, you take a rowing athlete, and if all they do is sit in a boat and specialize, there is a limit to the potential of that athlete. Right. 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 You can get into like the pyramid is only as tall as its base. Right. right. Very visual, very straightforward thing. Yeah. You look at powerlifting. The best powerlifters in the world, if they just squat, bench, and deadlift, they get worse. They need to grow the base of their exposures in the gym to drive adaptation. Okay. So whether your goals are specific in rowing or they're general variance is your friend and so we see this in every sport you know track athletes that spend only their time on the track are injured broken limited athletes and those that build a stronger base are more resilient their overall potential is greater etc so that's the first step variance is our friend now inside of variance this comes to like why I even talk about strongman yeah. is how basic and strong men and women get pissed when I say that, but how basic some of these movements can be right. in a good way. So if I can tell you that you can pull a sled, drag a sled, flip a tire, carry a sandbag with little to no cons and con list, right. and lots and lots large, and lots of pros, pro list. that's at the top of my list for a movement to consider to grow an athlete's base. Regardless and and of any it. coach would agree with you on that. Totally. Right. Totally. The fewer risks, yeah. the higher the rewards. Totally. And so when you look at it that way, variance is our friend. Well, how do we vary it? Uh, we, can, we can snatch, we can do Turkish get-ups, we can do one-legged wall balls, we can walk on our hands, we can do all of these things. Yeah. But for me, it's like, I only got so much time in a day with an athlete. And if I can get this fit right here, right now, today, I like this rather than the long story. Well, you're going to spend 10 years learning how to move better under this right. barbell. Right. Now, I'm not hating on barbells, and you know this is a story that I tell a million different ways to different people in the seminars and in class, but for me, it's like a low-hanging fruit conversation. Right. If I can get someone on their journey towards adaptation right now, I like that Yeah. as a coach. Why not? Right? I like that. We're going to get some stuff done. And I love that. Right. right. How quickly can we get somebody to move? And, and experience the adaptation that you're yeah. looking for without having to make it this yeah. drawn out experience. So it's like, I don't, 
I don't want this to sound like a cop-out answer, but it's kind of like, it doesn't really matter. You're a rower or not. If you have a specific adaptation goal, we need variance to build a, a bigger base. Yeah. When it comes to that variance, we got a big selection of movements out there. We got a big selection of movement practices out there. We could Bikram yoga ourselves to some adaptation. <laughs> Not knocking it, yeah. but if an athlete needs to be stronger, needs to understand hip expression, needs hamstrings, maybe there's a better, faster way right now. Right. You know, and so that's where I arrive at this side of things. Okay. Um, yeah. So what is that? What is that bigger, faster, stronger so, expression? So yeah, I, in uh, my seminar, I talk about like very simple ways to get people comfortable with the strongman stuff. Okay. And the first way is with heavy carries. Okay. Sandbag carry, keg carry, yoke carry, uh, front load the system and walk. And the beautiful thing about this is uh, running hurts people often if they don't know how to do it. Yeah. You run them fast, you run them far, they break. Yeah. Walking normally doesn't hurt a lot of people. <laughs> and there's some clumsy folks out there, but if you can put a heavy load in the front of your body, reach with your heel and pull through. You have this wonderful hamstring curl that happens. You have this wonderful glute contraction that happens. And now the backside of your body is getting strong. And I can't really think of a single downside to this movement. And, and I can very much speak from experience on that. Carrying a heavy load in front of me yeah. has smoked my hamstrings. Oh, and smoked little. my posterior chain. And I get a I get greater work out of my hamstrings doing that than I do with a barbell in my hands deadlifting. Yep. Uh, it, it's unreal. Taking a, a 400 meter walk with yep. a 150 pound bag yep. just destroys my hamstrings. Yeah. And we, well, that's what we see, right? It's like that will be the limiting factor. If we have someone carry like a load for max distance, mm -hmm. the, the hamstrings will stop working. You know, it's not like. It's not like, oh, I can't hold this bag anymore. It's like, right. I can't, I'm done. I literally can't you pull know? my legs and, through. And uh, for athletes that dump a lot of work into their quads, we see it on the erg, we see it in every expression, really, yeah. with the modern athlete, um, this is a place where you can't. Yeah. You, you can't do it. And so for many athletes, this is like a prehab thing. It's a rehab thing. It's a getting strong right here, right now thing. And so, you know, there's just too many reasons. And of course, I sound like a used car salesman because I'm the strongman guy saying, "Hey, strongman makes you rowing better." All that <laughs> oh, but stuff. But that's why that's why we're here. That's right? why we're here. But remember how I got here, yeah. right? I'm not waving the strongman flag. I don't right. need strongman to win, but strongman won for me in a yeah. lot of ways, right? And so, and the only reason why I say that is like not because I'm cool or whatever, but it's like for me, it's just like whatever works. Anything's fair game. Yeah. But this works for 100% of people that I've exposed this to. Maybe I consider it for people regardless of their goals. Yeah. Not just people that are excessive lifting heavy weights. All right, guys. This has been an awesome, awesome episode with Dark Horse Rowing. As always, make sure you sign up for our newsletter, The Hustler's Guide to Rowing, where you guys will get our latest blog article and video like this one in your inbox every single Tuesday morning. Guys, stay fit, be strong. See you on the other side.